Hi friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we have to discuss about computer instructions in computer architecture course, computer organization course, computer organization and architecture course. First of all, we already know that a program is a set of instructions that are stored in the memory by using a particular instruction format. Generally, the instruction format contains 16 bits. That 16 bits can be divided into three parts. The first part is address part. It occupies 0 to 11 bits. Address part specifies the address of the operands that are stored in the memory. Next three bits specifies the opcode part. That is the range of opcode part is 12 to 14 bits. It specifies what is the operation to be performed. Next one bit that is 14 to 15 bit specifies the mode bit. If the mode bit value is 0, that can be denoted as direct addressing. If the mode bit value is equal to 1, it indicates the indirect addressing. So this is the description about instruction format. Generally, a computer has three types of instruction formats. First one is memory reference instruction format. Second one is register reference instruction format. Third one is input output instruction format. The first one is memory reference instructions. Memory reference instructions are those instructions to perform a particular operation we require operands that operands are stored in the memory for that purpose we have to refer the memory that type of instructions are called as memory reference instructions memory reference instructions has follow the 16 bit instruction format the first 12 bits so that is 0 to 11 specifies the address part the address part specifies the address of the operands that are stored in the memory next three bits specifies the opcode part opcode part can also be called as operation code format operation code it specifies what is the operation to be performed. Next one bit specifies the mode bit. The mode bit can also be denoted as I. It specifies the addressing mode of the instruction. So the mode bit I is equal to 0. It defines the direct addressing direct addressing the mode bit i value is equal to 1 it can be called as indirect addressing indirect addressing so the mode bit contains two values if its value is 0 it can be called as direct addressing. Its value is 1. It can be called as indirect addressing. Next one. The range of opcode is 12 to 14. That means 3 bits we have to use to specify the opcode. With the 3 bits, how many number of possible operations we have to perform? That is 2 power n possible number of operations we have to perform 
that is 2 power n is that is n value is 3 that is 8. 8 possible operations we have to perform. So among that 8 possible operations we have to consider only 7 possible operations in memory reference instruction. Each possible operation can be denoted by using 3 bits. So the memory reference instruction opcode range is so 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 0. So total so 7 total 7 opcodes are there 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. Total 7 opcodes are there. Each and every opcode specifies one operation. So, 0, 0, 0 specifies and operation. 0, 0, 1 specifies add operation. 0, 1, 0 specifies load accumulator. 0, 1, 1 specifies store accumulator. 1, 0, 0 specifies branch unconditionally. 1, 0, 1 specifies branch and save address. 1, 1, 0 specifies increment and skip if 0. Okay. The description of these instructions that are discussed in the future video. Okay. Now, address part specifies the address of the operand. To perform the operation, we require some operands. That operands are stored in the memory by using a particular address. That addresses are specified in the address part of the instruction. So this is the memory reference instruction format. Next. Second one is register reference instruction. So register reference instructions are those instructions in that register reference instructions to perform a particular operation we require some operands that operands are stored in the registers instead of memory okay we have to refer the registers for operands for that purpose we have to use a register reference instructions Register reference instruction has 16-bit instruction format. So first 12 bits that is 0 to 11 specifies the register operation. That means what type of operation we have to perform on the registers that can be specified by the register operation. The range of register operation is 0 to 11. Next, 12 to 14 specifies the opcode part. Opcode can also be called as operation code. It specifies the operation to be performed. Okay. Next, 14 to 15 bit specifies the mode bit. Okay. In the case of register reference instruction, the opcode value is triple one. And mode bit value is zero. Okay. So, in the case of register reference instructions, the opcode contains only triple one and mode bit value i always 
zero. Okay. By observing this instruction code format, if any instruction has the opcode part contains triple one and more bit value is zero, it specifies a register reference instruction. Okay. So there are uh, 12 register reference instructions are there like complement accumulator, complement e-register, clear accumulator, clear e-register. In that way, so 12 register operations are there that we have to discuss later in this video. Okay. Next, third one is input output instruction format input output instructions are those instructions to perform a particular operation we require some operands that operands are stored in input output registers inpr is nothing but input register OUTR is nothing but output register. So for that purpose, we have to use input output instructions. Input output instruction contains the 16 bit format. So the first 12 bits specifies the input output operation. Input output operation. That means it specifies what type of, of what type of input output operation we have to perform. Next three bits specifies the upward part. It contains the value triple one, and the next one bit specifies the mode bit. The more bit value is 1. So, this is called as input output instruction format. Okay. So, by observing these three types of instruction format, if the opcode value is equal to 111 and the more bit value is equal to 1, that type of instruction is called as input output instruction if the output value is 111 and the more bit value is equal to 0 it can be called as register reference instruction if the output value contains 0002 110 and the more bit contains either 0 value or 1 value that type of instruction is called as memory reference instruction. This is the memory reference instruction format and this is the register reference instruction format and this is the input output instruction format. Okay, so here total number of memory reference instructions are 7 that are 0, 0, 0 to 110 total seven memory reference instructions are there. 0 to 11, that is 12 register reference instructions are there. Six input output instructions are there. Seven plus 12 plus six, that is total 25 basic computer instructions are there that we have to put in a single table that are basic computer instructions. 6 or 7 are memory reference instructions, 12 are register reference instructions, 6 are input output instructions. This table can be called as memory reference instructions. How many number of memory reference instructions are there? Seven memory reference instructions. So, 0, 0, 0 to 110. Okay. So, the first one is and, and memory reference instruction. So, here 
to perform the and operation we require two operands one operand is stored in the memory at a particular address and another operand is stored in the memory between that two operands we have to perform the logical and operation okay next here in the case of memory reference instruction i value contains either 0 or 1 if i value is 0 it indicates direct addressing if i value is equal to 1 it indicates indirect addressing here to specify the address we have to use hexadecimal code in hexadecimal code we have to use 16 bits to specify the address okay now in the case of and memory reference instruction how it can be represented so here for and operation the op code is 0 0 0 and i value is 0 if i value is 0 and uh, op code of the and instruction is 0 0 0 okay so 0 0 0 0 what is the decimal equivalent value that is 0 this 0 we have to write here and how many number of address bits are there that is a 12 address bits 12 address bits can be represented in hexadecimal code by using 3 bits like for example this one 1101 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 first four bits represents one hexadecimal digit next four bits represents one hexadecimal digit and the next four bits represents one hexadecimal digit okay so this can be represented as the x this can be represented as x this can be represented as x here by using mode bit and up code bit so 0 0 0 0 what is the equivalent hexadecimal value that is 0. The address part contains 12 bits. Okay, 12 bits can be divided into 4 4 bits. Each and every 4 bits can be represented by using the equivalent hexadecimal digit. Here we are not mentioning any code. So only don't guess we have to write 0 x x x in the case of direct addressing. Okay, next. In the case of indirect addressing, for this one, how can you write it as? Here, in the case of indirect addressing, I value is 1. Okay. 1, 0, this is and instruction of code. 1, 0, 0, 0. What is the equivalent decimal code? So, that is 8. And these are the 12 bits can be denoted as 3x's. So, 8x, x, x. So, this is 8x, x. Okay. So, this is the description about the and instruction. Next, second instruction is add instruction. So, to perform the add instruction, we require two operands. One operand is stored in the memory at a particular memory word. And another operand is stored in the accumulator. Between that two operands, we have to perform the add operation. Okay. Now, how can you write it? This uh, hexadecimal code. So first, we have to write it as this one. Direct addressing. So I value is zero. Next, what is the op code we have to use for add instruction? Zero zero. 1. So, 0, 0, 0, 1. What is the equivalent hexadecimal digit? That is 1. And these 12 bits can be represented as 3x's. 1x, x, x. Here, we have to write as 1x, x. Next, in the case of indirect addressing, in the case of indirect addressing, I value is 1. And 
एड इंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ कोड इज जीरो जीरो वन सो वन जीरो जीरो वन वॉट इज द इक्वल एंड डेसिमल कोड सो वन जीरो जीरो वन इज नाइन एंड दीज ट्वेल्व बिट्स कैन बी डिनोटेड एज थ्री एक्सेस नाइन एक्स 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 सो हियर नाइन एक्स 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 ओके नेक्स्ट द थर्ड इंस्ट्रक्शन इज लोड इट्स लोड एक्यूमुलेटर ओके सपोज we want to load the accumulator with a particular operand value that is stored in the memory of a particular memory board suppose one operand is there that operand is stored in the memory at a particular memory board that operand can be, that operand value can be loaded into the accumulator we have to use the instruction called load accumulator okay so how can you write it as uh, hexadecimal code in the case of direct addressing okay so i value is 0 in the case of direct addressing and for load accumulator our code is 010 010 so 0010 What is the equivalent decimal code? That is two, two three x's, two three x's. In the case of indirect addressing, how can you write it as? So here in the case of indirect indirect addressing, I value is one, and load accumulator of code is zero one zero one zero one zero. What is the equivalent hexadecimal code? That is a a triple x. So a triple x. next next instruction is store accumulator store accumulator is nothing but we want to store the operand value that is stored in the accumulator that can be stored into the memory that means one operand is stored in the accumulator that operand value is stored in the memory by using a particular instruction that is sta okay one operand value is there in the accumulator that operand value we want to store it in the memory for that purpose we have to use sta instruction okay how can you write the hexadecimal code in the case of direct addressing so i value is Zero and a store accumulator of code is zero one one zero one one zero zero one one. What is the equivalent hexadecimal value? That is three 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 x's. So in the case of direct addressing, in the case of indirect addressing, how can you write it as? In the case of indirect addressing, I value is one and of code value is zero one one. One zero one 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 zero one one is nothing but so that is equivalent hexadecimal code is B so B three access okay here this address is not mentioned we do not know what address value because of that reason we have to use three dot cash next one is so B U N branch unconditionally. so without any condition we have to transfer the program control from one location to another location in the program for that purpose we have to use branch unconditionally instruction okay so what is the hexadecimal code we have to write okay in the case of direct addressing i value is 0 what is the up code value One zero zero, one zero zero. So zero one zero zero. What is the equivalent hexadecimal code? That is four. Four three don't guess. Four three don't guess. In the case of indirect addressing, so I value is one, and R code value is one zero zero. So one one zero zero. What is the equivalent hexadecimal? This it that is a C C three don't guess. Okay, next 
Next instruction is branch and save address. Suppose we want to transfer the program control from the calling function in the main program to called function in the sub program. We have to store the next return address. Okay. After executing the instructions in the called function, again the program control can be transferred to which address? That address is stored in the uh, stored by using that instruction branch and save address. Okay. How can you write it? This hexadecimal code. Okay. In the case of direct addressing, I value is zero. What is the op code value? That is 101. So 0101. What is the equivalent hexadecimal code? That is 5. So 5, 3 x's or 3 don't guess. In the case of indirect addressing, I value is 1 and op code value is 101. 1101. What is the equivalent hexadecimal code? That is D. D 3 x's. We have to write. Next, last instruction is ISJ, increment and escape if zero value. Okay, so we have to increment the program counter value if it contains the zero value. Okay, for that purpose we have to use ISJ instruction. Okay, so here in the case of direct addressing, so I value is a zero and op code value is 110. 0110. What is the equivalent hexadecimal code? That is a 6. So 6, 3 don't guess. We have to write. In the case of indirect addressing, so in the case of indirect addressing, I value is 1 and op code value is 110. So 1110, what is the equivalent hexadecimal value? That is E. E 3x's. E 3x's. So in this way, we have to write the memory reference instruction hexadecimal code. So this column indicates the direct addressing. This column indicates the indirect addressing. So the address part 12 bits can be uh, can be denoted as 3x's. We do not know the address, so that we have to use three don't guess in the case of address that is three don't guess represents the 12 bit address okay next we can go for register reference instruction second one is register reference instructions this to this table shows 12 register reference instructions we already know that in the case of register reference instruction, first 12 bits represents the register reference, register operation. What type of register operation we have to use by using first 12 bits, we have to say that. Okay. Next one, next three bits represents the op code. In the case of register reference instruction, the op code value is always triple one. Okay. Next, next bit is mode bit. In the case of register reference instruction, the mode bit value is always zero. Okay. So now zero triple one. So zero triple one. What is the equivalent hexadecimal value? That is seven. So that for 12 instructions in the hexadecimal code, the first digit always 7. The first digit is a combination of mode bit and op code value. Mode bit value is 0, op code value is a triple 1, 0 triple 1. What is the equivalent hexadecimal value? That is a 7. So therefore, the first digit in the hexadecimal code is always 7. Okay. Next one, in the addresses, first I am taking 800. Half of 800 is 400. 400 half is 200. 
200 half is 100. Next I am taking 0, 8, 0 is the address. Half is 0, 4, 0. Half is 0, 2, 0. Half is 0, 1, 0. Next I am taking 0, 0, 8 address. Half is 0, 0, 4. Half is 0, 0, 2. Half is 0, 0, 1. In this way, we have to write the hexadecimal code. Okay. First digit always combination of op code and mode bit 0, 1, 1, 1. The equivalent decimal value is 7. So, the first digit in the hexadecimal code for 12 instruction is 7. Next, I am taking 800. Half is 4. Half is 2. Half is 100. Next, I am taking 0, 080. 0. Half is 0, 4, 0. Half is 0, 2, 0. Half is 0, 1, 0. Next, I am taking 0, 0, 8. Half is 0, 0, 4. Half is 0, 0, 2. Half is 0, 0, 1. In this way, we have to write the hexadecimal code. Okay. First instruction is CLA. CLA means clear accumulator. That means whatever the content is there in the accumulator, we have to clear the content of the accumulator. We have to use clear accumulator instruction. That is clear AC. Uh, the corresponding hexadecimal code is 7800. Next one, CLE. Okay, clear e-register. Clear e-flip-flop. So, whatever the content is there in the e-flip-flop, we have to clear that value. For that purpose, we have to use the instruction CLE. That means clear e so, its hexadecimal code is 7, half of the 800 is 400, 7400. Next one is CMA, complement accumulator. Whatever the content is there in the accumulator, we have to complement it. Is. That is 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. That is called as complement accumulator instruction CMA. The hexadecimal code is 7, half of the 400 is 200. Next one, CME, complement e-value. Okay, uh, whatever the content is there in the e-register, we have to complement it to 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. For that purpose, we have to use CME. So, its hexadecimal value is 7, 200 half is 100. Next one is CIR, circulate, write, AC and E. So, we have to perform the circulate write operation on the content of AC and the content of E register. Okay. Its hexadecimal code is 7. First, I am taking 0, 8, 0. Next one, CIL, circulate, left, AC and E. Okay. Its hexadecimal code is 7. Half of 080 is 040. Whatever the content is there in the accumulator and E register, we have to perform the circular left operation. Next one is INC. INC is nothing but we have to increment the content of the accumulator by 1. So its hexadecimal code is 7. 040 half is 020. Next. Next instruction is SPA. Skip next instruction if AC contains the positive value. If AC contains the positive value, so then we have to skip the next instruction in the program. For that purpose, we have to use SPA instruction. Its hexadecimal code is 7. 0 to 0 half is 0 1 0. Next one, SMA. Skip next instruction if AC contains the negative value. If AC contains the negative value, we have to skip the next instruction. So, its hexadecimal code is 7. So, here we have start with 008. Next one, SJDA. Skip next instruction if AC contains the value 0. If AC contains the 0 value, we have to skip the next instruction in the program. So, here the hexadecimal code is 7, half of 008 is 004. Next one, SJDE, 
skip next instruction if e value is 0 if e value is 0 we have to skip the next instruction in the program its hexadecimal code is 7 half of 004 is 002 next one hlt so that is hot computer we have to stop the execution of the computer for that purpose we have to use halt computer instruction its hexadecimal code is 7 half of 002 is 001 okay so this is the uh, description about register reference instructions by using these 12 bits we have to specify what type of operation can be performed on ac register and e register here in the case of register reference instructions we have to use only two registers one is ac ac stands for accumulator and e stands for extended accumulator register that is flip flop so next we can go for input output instructions third one is input output instruction this table shows the input output instructions there are total six input output instructions are there the first column specifies the input output instructions the corresponding hexadecimal code for each and every instruction and its description okay in the case of input output instruction the first 12 bits specifies what type of ico operation to be performed next three bits represents the opcode it contains the opcode value 1111 next one next bit specifies the mode bit so the mode bit in input output instructions is always one okay so the mode bit together with the opcode what is the value we are getting four ones what is the equivalent hexadecimal value that is f 15, 15 e equivalent decimal hexadecimal value is F. Therefore, in the hexadecimal code, the first digit always F in 6 input output instructions. Okay. Now, the, the next 12 bits. So, here the next 12 bits. The 12 bits can be represented in... Uh, 3 bit hexadecimal code that 3 bit hexadecimal codes we have to write it here first 800 half of the 800 is 400 half of the 400 is 200 half of the 200 is 100 next one is 080 half of 080 is 040 in this way we have to write the hexadecimal code okay so the first instruction is INP so that means we have to read the input character from the keyboard whatever the character that we have read from the keyboard that can be sent to the accumulator for that purpose we have to use INP instruction its hexadecimal code is F800 next one is OUT okay so whatever the character that is stored in the output register that can be sent it to the accumulator. For that purpose, we have to use OUT instruction. Its hexadecimal code is F. Half of the 800 is 400. F400. Next one, SKI. Okay, skip on input flag. Okay, this can be discussed in later videos. Okay, so its hexadecimal code is F. Half of 400 is 200. F200. Next one, SKO. So that means skip on output flag. Its hexadecimal code is F. Half of 200 is 100. Next one is ION. That is interrupt on. Okay, what is interrupt? That can be discussed in later videos. Okay, F. Here the address is, is 080. Okay, next one is IOF interrupt off so its hexadecimal code is f half of 080 is 040 first 800 half 400 half 200 half 100 once we are getting the 100 next we are start with 080 040 
Okay. In this way, we have to write the hexadecimal code. Okay. Next one is a small topic is there in a computer instructions. That is instruction set completeness. Instruction set completeness is nothing but a set of instructions is said to be complete if the computer has a sufficient number of instructions in each and every following category. There are four categories are there. In each and every category, a computer contains a sufficient number of instructions. Then that instruction set is said to be complete. Okay. The first category is automatic logic and shift instructions. In that category, so it contains the sufficient number of instructions. Second category is instructions that are used for moving information to and from memory and processor registers. Processor register is nothing but accumulator. So memory to accumulator and accumulator to memory, whatever the instructions we have to use to move that information from memory to accumulator register and accumulator register to memory. In that category, it contains the sufficient number of instructions. Third one is program control instructions together with the instruction that check the status conditions. Here, we have to use some instructions that are used for checking the status conditions and also some instructions are used for controlling the program. In that category also, it contains a sufficient number of instructions. Fourth category is input-output instructions. In that category, we have to use input-output instructions. It contains the sufficient number of instructions in that category. In these four categories, a instruction set contains a sufficient number of instructions. Then we can say that that type of instruction set is called as instruction set completeness. I hope all of you understanding this video. If you have any doubts, please put your doubts in the comment section. I will try to clarify your doubts. If you really like this video, please click on the like button and share this video to your friends and classmates. If you really like this video, please subscribe my YouTube channel. So, Devela Srinivasara. After subscribing my YouTube channel, click on the bell icon to get the future updates in my YouTube channel. For better understanding of this computer architecture, ORR computer organization course, go to this channel, go to the playlist called computer organization, ORR computer architecture. It contains approximately more than 100 videos. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video.